lunatic today telling me, what, oh, this is what he said. I, I said something about women drivers and he wrote, what are you going to do when they impeach Joe Biden and Kamala Harris becomes president, you misogynist? <laughs> <laughs> Laugh? I, I mean, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> I don't care who the president is. You think I care who the president is? How does my life change when the presidents change? <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> things were pretty good under Trump, I got to say. He, he, yeah, I mean, if if Trump was president, I don't think we'd be funding a proxy war in Ukraine. Yeah. And I don't think we'd be about to fund a proxy war in Africa like we're about to. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Like... First off, they they had drones strike Moscow today. And yes, they do. All right. You really think that Moscow, well, first off, we say Ukraine did, but like Moscow, Russia knows it's a proxy war with America. It's American drones paid for with American dollars, pilots trained by Americans. Yeah. So it's like, I, I'm, Look, I have a 17 year old son. He turns 18 in December, and I and I watch this stuff, and I'm just like, and I watch people supporting the Ukraine. I see the Ukrainian flags. I'm like, you idiots! Like, don't you know what they're doing right now? Like, don't you see? Like, do you not think America knows exactly what it's doing by striking Moscow? Like, they are trying to amp this thing up. Well, and it's <clears throat> like Adrian said, like, for those who who aren't following or only follow what like the news media says, like, Ukraine is lost. This this big summer offensive, spring offensive, that was supposed to just wipe the the Russians away, it it failed weeks ago. Like, I mean, there's they're shooting soldiers that are leaving the front lines because they're terrified. Like they know they're gonna they're going in to be slaughtered. So they're just like, they're they're shooting runaways. Like the, you know, like you'll have you know a a, a Russian position sit there take out an an entire ukrainian battalion and then fall back a mile and the ukrainians will think oh we you know we we took a mile it's like yeah but if that's just of your own territory russia's just waiting russia's bleeding them dry until there's nothing in front of them anymore you know until they and then there's no one yeah but i think this whole strike moscow thing is the u.s knows ukraine cannot win this war so they need russia they're provoking Russia to yes. attack NATO. Yes. <clears throat> They're provoking Russia to attack a NATO country so that they have an excuse to send NATO in full force on Russia. Right, because so far there hasn't <clears throat> been anything that would actually legitimately trigger Article 5. Nope. No, Russia's smart, dude. They know what they're doing. They're at, so like, But they're, if their capital, Moscow is Russia. Like, Moscow is their capital. Like, you can't think that a drone strike in Moscow three times in the past two weeks is not going to trip. Like I'm in New York, man. Plus it's complete. There's no point to it. I don't even know if they killed anyone. And even if they did, what what are they doing? Killing a 20 year old Russian girl hundreds yeah. of miles away from the border for what? It doesn't stop the artillery that's raining down. On I, I think they are trying to provoke Russia into doing something to a NATO country so that they have an excuse to go full force with NATO. And that'll be a wrap. Like, it's just crazy what's going on right now. And, and I think people, um, from the way the war went the first year, I think people have a warped sense of Russia's capability. Like, like everyone thought Russia was just going to sweep in and just destroy them, right? Well, number one, Russia only sent about 70,000 soldiers in on their invasion. And, like, right now, Russia has 800,000 soldiers on the border in, in defense. Like... Russia sent a relatively very small force and and it was largely as almost as a decoy towards Kiev so that Russia could take the eastern part of Ukraine that has all the resources and has the Russian speaking population. Like Russia's little thrust towards Ukraine or towards Kiev allowed them to take that yeah. with only 70,000 people. And now <clears throat> they have 10 times that number defending it against a Ukrainian military that's been absolutely decimated and is only standing up because America has put all of our money, all of our resources towards propping them up. It's so crazy, dude. I think Russia never intended to just go in and sweep over Ukraine. They always intended to make this a long dragged out thing, make everybody like, like, 
you, you hear our military and they're like they're like we're, we're just trying to get Russia to spend up their forces and we're just, Russia is in this thing for the long haul. They're not going anywhere. I don't know, man. I don't think it was ever going to be this run in and no. sweep through Ukraine and take the whole country. They don't want the whole country. I, I think I think what we really see is that especially with the way Russia invaded, is that they really it it honestly was not their long term intention to do that. Like their long term intention was to keep Ukraine from being a threat to them, whether that meant um, having them be a political ally, ally like they were prior to the 2014 color revolution, uh, more or less started by the CIA, or whether it was just to to keep them neutral. Like they just did not. The border between Russia and Ukraine is it's not a defensive border. It's open step. Right. So that area of Russia is always really rather. Uh, vulnerable so they they need that state that ukrainian state next to them to not be a threat what russia saw in the weeks prior to the invasion was over 2000 um 2000 cases of ukrainian forces breaking the ceasefire and firing on russian militias or russian speaking peoples things like that and and i think russia made possibly the wrong you know they I think the decision to invade was still wrong, but it, it wasn't like this pre-thought out long-term strategy to, to take their neighbor, you know, to take and rape yeah. their neighbor. <clears throat> yeah. This is a weird one, man. I just, I just see the war drums getting banged wars and rumors of wars. And now we see this thing in, <clears throat> in Africa happening where in Africa, what's going on in Africa? Did you have the story on that? Yeah. So, I can pull up the tweet uh, to show the map. Basically, what has happened recently is um, in in Niger, the the That's French. How you pronounce it? How do you pronounce it? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you make me? You can't say what an A. <laughs> Niger. Yeah, pull up is the map. Niger. Um, so here in Niger, <laughs> look, you guys um, see, I'm letting Rob Rob knows his stuff when it comes to this stuff. That's why I'm I'm listening. So th this area of, of Africa is, is French Africa, right? Like this is the area converted by Lefebvre and the Holy Ghost Fathers. Th these were more or less French uh, client states, uh, mm -hmm. especially like Algeria here towards the top. But Niger had more or less a, a French friendly regime, honestly a French puppet regime. Yeah. And Niger was sending all of their um, uranium, Niger actually has a large uranium de deposits, uh, Niger was supplying the France with u uranium, mostly for French nuclear reactors, but France also does have a nuclear weapons program too. Um, but what happened is is a there was a military coup overthrew the French puppet regime regime in Niger, and then on the map here you see these other all these green countries. It's more or less like an international organization supported by France and the U.S. The red countries were kicked out and are suspended from joining. Niger was part of the of ECOWAS, or however you pronounce it. But now they are, because of this coup, also suspended. And these countries in green are saying that they will go to war with these other countries here. And France and U.S. are saying that they will support these countries in green. But oh, wow. the big kicker is that Algeria here at the top, the 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 gray colored yeah. country up top here so they were also a, a french colony but they're saying that they will allow um shipments from from russia and iran and china through their ports to support niger and like mali because you, you most of these countries in red here don't have ports they're landlocked yeah. algiers saying they will allow transfers of military goods to these countries. So we're, I mean, we're looking at like a multinational war here in West Africa. Where, where Russia is supporting Niger and you, uh, the U S and France are supporting all the green the other nations. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're looking at a proxy war between, so you're just looking at more of the same. This is just another proxy war. And I just saw, uh, uh, like the new president of Niger out talking about how he feels like Russia is their brothers and all this stuff. Like this thing's going to amp up quick. Yeah. And, and if we think the, the human cost of Ukraine 
has been bad. I mean, Ukraine had a, a decent, a, a fairly decent, you know, I wouldn't call, I wouldn't have called them a first world nation, but they had a decent infrastructure, um, you know, things like that. The, but West Africa here is is a part of the world that's been suffering since the end of colonialism. Yeah, like if you, if you have a proxy war between world powers here in this part of the world, you're going to see famine. You're going to see yeah. slaughter. I mean, you're, it's going to be terrible. Dude, this is your forte, man. I'm so glad we talked about this. Like, <laughs> you just taught me so much. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm so glad this came up. Dude, I don't know, man. The world is just getting so crazy. It's just, I, I have a 17 year old son and I worry about this. I know they're going to freak because I, I, I think I posted a, an article in there today. Yeah, you did. Right? I did about, about the draft. Um, yeah, people are starting to push for a limited draft. Where is it? Let's, I think it was the last one I put in, right? Uncertain. Okay, let's, let's just read this before we get off. Uncertain future of the U.S. military's all-volunteer force. The U.S. military <clears throat> has a manpower problem, and it's not just due to today's recruiting shortages. It's time for a comprehensive plan to solve the personnel shortfall. This year marks the 50th year anniversary of the United States all-volunteer military force. It also coincides with one of the worst recruiting years for the U.S. military since 1973. Well, I wonder why. Keep keep putting your your rainbow ads out there, guys. It's really making people want to fight for their yeah. country. I would never. I'd rather my son do anything. Like I would let him go to prison before fighting for this country right now. The Army missed the 2022 recruiting goal by 15,000 soldiers, and the Army, Air Force, and Navy all expect to miss their goals in 23. The shortage is blamed on a confluence of domestic issues, a competitive job market, lack of in-person recruiting during the pandemic, and a population of young adults who are less informed, less interested. Maybe they're more informed, more <laughs> less interested interested and less qualified for military service <clears throat> the lack of qualified recruits has received a lot of attention but the fact that our young population does not see the value of military service should also ignite a great concern yeah yeah maybe maybe you guys should stop driving this country to hate themselves like they literally hate patriotism they're burning american flags that like what is wrong with these people the god i was just gonna say like i i worked towards getting into west point out of high school like i i got accepted couldn't serve um couldn't serve for for medical reasons but like that's what i wanted to do and i am so glad i did not get that opportunity now because how could i in good conscience you know serve to to further the goals of i mean let, let's be honest when mohammedans call us the great satan do any of us really like actually disagree with that anymore I don't know. We, we, we were talking. I know you don't like talking end times, but like the whore of Babylon is probably America. <laughs> like or, we are or our greatest ally. <laughs> yeah. Like we are the evil empire. Yeah. But, th but what they're talking about, like missing recruitments and transition to an all volunteer force. Like, so the global war on terror, basically what they're saying is we need to reinforce the draft and actually start using the draft. So, uh, the draft under consideration. December 31st, 2002, a year after the start of the Operation Enduring Freedom, the opinion page of the New York Times read, bring back the draft. Representative Charles Rangel, who voted against the Iraq war, warned that an all-volunteer force would lead to an adventurism and thought a renewed draft would help citizens appreciate the cost of war. By 2004, despite sending 130,000 soldiers into Iraq during the invasion, any debate about enacting a draft was over. The House of Representatives held a vote to implement the draft, primarily to draw criticism to the Iraq war during an election year. The bill was rejected. <clears throat> so, I mean, look, they're, they're, they're just trying to bring up the draft again. I mean, every one of us, when you go to get your license, register for the draft, right? Including women now. Do they? I, I thought. I didn't know they so. made them do that yet. I know <clears throat> it's been talked about. Oh, I, I see Mike graduated from West Point here. Yeah, so oh man. I just <laughs> if think... they start drafting all the women, who will take care of the cats? <laughs> That's actually a great line. <laughs> a good line, Paul. Oh man. It really uh there's no female draft yet. Yeah, okay. I didn't think I know they talked about it, but I don't think there is one yet. It's just getting so crazy, man. I don't know. In the church, in the world. Pray for our country, pray for our church, pray for the Pope. 
please, Lord, get us out of this. <laughs> we need help. All right, man. We did an hour and 45 tonight. That's a long I, one. It felt rather short, to be honest. Yeah, it did. I think it was good. We got to. We'll cut some clips up. We'll get rid of the the thirty minutes of bro talk in the beginning for everybody. <laughs> we'll put some clips up. <clears throat> you know what it is that you can edit in Streamyard now. It's great. That is a lot easier, honestly. Yeah, I don't have to actually like screen record and stuff. Anthony looks tired. Busy day, lounging in the skids. Yeah, you so, showed us all what you do now. Well, that was in a regular day, though. A regular day, I, I do way less. <laughs> a regular day, a regular day, truck. I'm, watch yeah, the regular iPad. Day, I'm in my pickup truck. That was actually a private job we did, which we don't usually do. We don't usually do private jobs. Um, but that was so, it was so cool because we were done by 11 a.m. And because of the heat, Con Ed shut down. So we weren't able to do anything after. So I called my uncle and I'm like, hey, we're done. Me and Mike are coming to take your boat. And I was kidding. And he's like, well, nobody's used it all season. It could use a run. I'm like, we're on our way. So I took my friend Mike and my friend Carlo. We went to my, my uncle's house, took his boat. We went to Freeport, Nautical Mile, had lunch, and then we drove to Fire Island and had rocket fuels for dinner. <laughs> it was a fun day, and his boat is a lot better than mine. Oh, you know what? We oh, dude, I hate that I'm waiting till the end of the show to do this. First off, like and subscribe, guys. We're awful. Forty six percent of our audience is not subscribed. Um, and the other thing is, we're one one away on locals. We are one if away. One more p- person subscribes, we can do. Hour long shows, hour long locals. shows on locals. We could do trivia. I honestly, what I want to do on locals, I want to bring like I want out of the fifty people who are subscribed on locals. If any of you want to join us for a show, I can't do everyone, but like right. we'll, if if you if you are a paid subscriber and you want to come on the show and hang with us for a night, I'll we'll we'll do like one person a month or something, and we'll do something like that. Can't be every episode because we have other guests, but uh, maybe one. I'm taking. I'll take my locals back if y'all don't want more more local stuff. <laughs> if you don't start doing more local stuff, we are going to. We need one more, one you more. Know what? I uh, I said it on Twitter today. So we just hit four thousand subs. When we hit five thousand, we need we should do an old time trivia show with all the regulars. Yeah, I think that would be a good five thousand sub show. I mean, I want to do I want to do something. I want to do trivia soon. I actually do. Like I'm ready. I'm ready to bring it back. I, my trauma. It's only over. been four months. I'm ready. My my trauma is over. <laughs> Great stream. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, Short so. Farrell. You guys don't understand how much we appreciate stuff like this. You don't realize it really does help k- encourage us to keep going. Um, but yeah, if you if any if one more person joins, we're gonna do something special on locals. And like I said, we'll we'll see if we could do maybe once a month bring one of the local subscribers on stream to just come and hang for an off the rails, mm-hmm. and then you guys could share. You're like you guys are in the chat always. With your comments, if anybody wants to come on, we'll do an off the rails once a month with a local subscriber. It'll take Night two before. years to get everyone on. <laughs> oh, it'll take f- four years. <laughs> My man, we'll be up. we'll be long canceled because something one of those guys is before then. Or maybe we'll do a local stream and bring three or four on at a time. Yeah. You get to fifty on locals, we get to get a ride on Anthony's boat. <laughs> Come on, Paul, cheapos. Help us Paul, out. You, you, might, you might not have been around when Anthony did a show from his boat. I did do it in my driveway, though. Intoxicated. I was very intoxicated. My <laughs> wife came up drunk. My, my wife walked over from the neighbors. She had a few glasses of wine, and she jumped on the stream. The first time like, she was ever on camera. Yeah, my, and Rob's like, dude, that's so out of character for your wife. I'm like, she's a little tipsy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, hi, guys. <laughs> no, Caitlin, it's not that big. No, it's a very small boat. Um. Uh, all right. So yeah, guys, please join our locals. Please hit like and subscribe if you aren't already. We're forty six percent of our audience is not subscribed. That's insane. We could be up to seven thousand right now. So, all right, let's wrap it up. We're <laughs> gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> what do you think the locals is for? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We haven't made anything hey, yet. What are you gonna do with the boat when we move to we Tennessee? Ha- we have. Oh man, I'll go on a lake. <laughs> I'll find a lake. We haven't made enough money to pay for Rob's plane tickets to Pennsylvania yet. Not, not even close. No, so that's what we're trying to aim for right now. Yep. But all right, take us out, bro. Okay. United the clans. Enoch. Let's go. United the clans. Enoch. Let's go. Yo, yo, uh. 
Take me back to my reversion. Unite the clans, I give thanks to each person.